my lovelies. I hope you're all well. So one of the things that I wanted to do when I remade the craft room was to create a font wall. So I want to be able to display the fonts that I like, the fonts that I love uh, onto my wall so that I can easily see what font is going to look good for a project. And it's just to help me remember what fonts I like. I have so many different fonts you know, there's so many different ones that I like for different reasons and trying to keep a track of them can be quite difficult. Now I have done a video before on how I kind of organise my fonts, but to be able to have my favourite fonts on a wall that I can just look at and see the name of the font and go, well that's going to look good, for me that's a really good way of doing it. So I'm going to use a site that I have shown you all before, which is wordmark.it. So you can see it's up here. So it's wordmark.it. And it is a great website for being able to see all your fonts. Now you can type in a word or a phrase and it will then show you that word or phrase in all your different fonts. Now I want to kind of see what my fonts look like in the best possible way. So I've used a word which kind of uses most letters, which of course is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I mean, what other word is there that uses all those letters? So once you've chosen your word or your phrase that you're going to use, all you're going to do is press enter. You can then see that it comes up with all your fonts, so all the fonts that you have downloaded onto your computer will be shown. Now the only fonts that will not be shown on this are the Cricut fonts. So you are going to have to do your Cricut fonts separately and you'll just do that by typing them out in Design Space. It will do all your other fonts though, so you'll be able to choose which ones you like depending on the word or the phrase that you are using. So I just go through and I make a list of all the ones that I like. So I may, for example, really like this one, which is dandelion soup, but I may not be too keen on this one, which is dirty princess. So I'm not going to include that on my wall. It doesn't mean I'm going to remove the font. It just means that I'm being selective about the fonts that I'm choosing. Once I've chosen all my fonts, and you will find that changing the word makes a difference to the fonts you're going to choose, so it's well worth doing it over several kind of different words, uh, just to kind of get a real look at the fonts that you're going to use. Once you've done that, you can then go into Design Space. I know from my list that I got to modern number 20 and my next one on my list is motherland. So if I go to my fonts and I just start typing in motherland, you'll see it will then come up. So I'm then just going to type motherland, which of course is the name of the font. I then want to make my font size 100, which is the font size I've made all of them. Now you may find, like with this one, actually looking at it, it looks very different in supercalifragilisticexpialidocious than it does in Motherland. So actually I'm not keen on that font. So I can then move to the next one, which is my story. So I'm just gonna change the search and type in my story. And again, I can change my text to the name of my font. I much prefer that one. I've changed the font size to 100 because that's the font size that I'm going to be using. Then all I want to do is decrease my letter space so that they overlap because it is a cursive font. You'll see that with the letter space it's not quite doing it today. This one's already touching whereas this one isn't. So we're going to go to advanced and ungroup to letters. 
And I'm then going to manually move my letters so that they overlap. Once I'm happy with the way that looks, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to weld it all together because I want it to continuously cut. I don't want to see those cut lines there, so I want it to cut as one, which is why I'm going to weld it. And then I can continue doing this. Now, I'm doing it in stages, so I'm probably doing, you know, 50 or 60 in one go then I'm moving on to the next 50 or 60. So I'm going to be doing it in stages, but that's all I'm doing is I'm literally just choosing the fonts that I want and then writing the name in that font, doing it at a hundred, the font size at a hundred, and then we can go to make it. So you can see we've got four mats here. We've got one 12 by 24 and then it's done. Uh, three 12 by 12s. I mean, I could, if I wanted to, go back and attach those two mats together so it cuts as a 12 by 24, uh, but I'm just going to leave it as it is because actually I'm going to do them in different colours, I think, because that'll look quite good. But you could, of course, do them all in one colour. But we can then go to continue. I'm using my Maker today, but of course, if you've got any of the Explore machines, you can use those. If you're using a specialist vinyl, so something different, uh, so for example, a holographic, then you're going to want to turn your dial to custom. I'm just using normal vinyl today, so I'm just gonna use the vinyl setting. So I can place it onto the wall and then I can use my Cricut scraper to really, really work it into the wall. Now when it comes to removing the transfer tape, you may find that when you pull back, your vinyl is sticking and not sticking and it's a bit all over the place. So a really good trick is to get your scraper and then fold the transfer tape around it. So as you pull back, you are using the scraper to pull the transfer tape away and you're keeping it all nice and flush to the wall. And I find that that helps with really tricky transfers. So exactly the same with this one, we're going to come in and give that a good scrape with our scraper. And then we're just going to place our transfer tape over our scraper and we're just going to roll all the way down the word. And I just find that this is a really good method of transferring. 